This afternoon's first session is, um, the title of it is Visual Analysis. Uh, it might conventionally in the past have been called Document Analysis, but I think this is a nice distinction. It's that it's looking at documents as visual objects, uh, various, various papers doing this and trying to extract information from the visual side of what is in the document. Um, our, first, our first talk today is from Brazil. It's going to be presented by Eduardo Cardoso. Um, and they're looking at getting information from news web pages, which is obviously an important class of, of web pages. So, and this is a this is a group that uh, some of the people in this group have a long history with Doc Eng. Rogério Rodriguez worked with Luis Fernando Gomez Suarez in, in at Pukihio and uh, and has been a contributor at various times in the document engineering community. Thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. So uh, I'm going to present to you today an efficient language independent method to extract content from news web pages. It's a rather long title, but it's very simple. So I'm going to start with a quick task overview. Given a news web page, we want to start by detecting the relevant content, which is the, the middle portion uh, where the actual news story is. And we want to go one step further and extract structured data out of it. So we're particularly interested in title, publication date, and the news body. Why is this important? Uh, our scenario is search engines. So we want to index documents for uh, textual search. And it can also be used uh, as a basis to apply natural language processing and other tasks on top of the of the text. There are other uses, but they're not our primary focus, such as screen readers for the visually impaired and uh, reflowing for small screens. Uh, a quick recap of the state of the art. Uh, page level approaches are very common. There are very good results for most labels. By labels, I mean title, date, body. Some, some works uh, talk about author, advertisement, etc. But most of them rely on page rendering, which for our scenario is too slow. So our desirable characteristics are broad ap applicability, which means a page level approach. And we add one restriction that we want to be able to apply this to a document written in any language, English, Portuguese, Spanish, even Chinese. We want a high extraction quality, that's very important, and performance. Uh, we're dealing with a high volume of documents, so page rendering is too slow and we need something faster. I'm gonna talk a little about our approach. Uh, we use a, a machine learning model to classify DOM text nodes. And we use visual features. But since we don't use uh, page rendering, we wrote our own CSS parser. And I'm going to talk a little about that uh, ahead. And again, our focus is on large scale document processing. So uh, we start uh, identifying the relevant content. And then we proceed with title detection, date detection, and body detection in this order. To detect the relevant content, we use the NCE algorithm, which is a previous work of ours. It was published in 2009. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of how this algorithm works, but basically, we look for uh, a massive portion of text in the page, and then we proceed by refining it. And other algorithms could be used here, such as readability, which is uh, well known. And once we detect the relevant content, we will be working on a subset of the DOM nodes in the document. And the subset uh, is based on the relevant content. We expand it a little bit, uh, but uh, the focus is on the relevant content. 
So from now on, uh, everything happens on this subset of nodes. We have a small set of features, and I'm gonna highlight the ones uh, we feel are most important for each step. For title detection, the edit distance from the text node to the document's title tag is often very, very useful because they often overlap. The font size is very important. The title is usually uh, displayed in, in bigger font sizes. And we use the number of similarly styled nodes in the document. Uh, this deserves a little explanation. Uh, when you look at a news page, we can often identify the title very quickly, even if it's in a language we don't know how to, to read or speak. That is because it, it's usually uh, presented uniquely. It stands out from the rest. So we look for a combination of font size, font color, and bold text, and we count how many nodes present this combination in the document. And titles are usually unique in this regard. So this feature usually has a value of one or two for titles. And if we can find a suitable title, we just go with the document's title, the title tag. For the detection, we usually look for uh, small nodes with a small amount of text. And we look for the presence of digits. Uh, this is because usually we have a timestamp such as 2 p.m. or uh, a date such as September 21st. And we see numbers there most of the time. So it's, it's usually a good signal. And we look uh, at the distance to the identified title from the previous step. Usually, when you look at the title and the date in the DOM tree, they're usually close. So this is a good signal to detect dates. And we look for nodes close to the title. This has a small issue that our model becomes title dependent. So if we happen to miss the title, our date detection won't be as good. Uh, we performed some experimentation and this didn't, didn't show to be uh, very, uh, the results were still good. It wasn't as bad as we thought. And we just kept it because uh, it was looking good. And for body detection, we, we're going to use the relevant content that the algorithm provided us, not the expanded subset. And we're going to remove the title and the date if they are contained in the relevant content. That's going to be our body. We tried some other approaches, but they didn't really show much improvement. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the quality and applicability of our method. We use two corpora. The first one we created ourselves, it has 200 pages written in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And then we used another corpus which has works published in the literature. I believe it was presented uh, last year in Document Engineering as well. It's the new 600, and it has about 600 pages all written in English. So we started with a, an intrasite cross-validation. Uh, what we called intrasite is actually we trained the model on some pages, for instance, pages from CNN. And when we apply it, we apply it to other pages also from CNN. So the model is able to capture some characteristics from that website. And the results we have are about 92% of F1 for title, 84 for dates, and 87 for body. And we also did what we called an extra site cross-validation, which is the opposite. We train using CNN, but we, we will only apply to BBC, Fox News, and other websites. So this, uh, this shows how well our approach can be used for pages that we didn't intend originally for it to be used, uh, un, uh, unseen scenarios. 
So we still have 91% for title, 77 for date, and 87 for body. I have a slide here with the difference from one to the other. And we can see that uh, title and body have very stable results. We can capture these two labels uh, with good results. And we see uh, some fluctuation on date. And we attribute this to uh, the fact that we don't use textual features to detect dates. So we don't have a dictionary of days of the week or months because we're interested in applying this to any language. So we didn't use that. Uh, we also tried to apply it to some pages in Chinese, but we didn't have annotations for it, so we don't have any numbers. But the, the, visual, the, the visual inspection that we conducted showed some consistent results. And then we applied to New 600, which uh, we didn't use until the, the approach was finalized. So this is, uh, this is good to check if we're biased by our choice of pages. And it seems we're not because the results were still good. We have 93% for title, 86 for date, and 88 for body. So I, I talked about quality. I talked about how our method can be uh, applied to several, uh, several pages. I'm going to talk a little bit about the performance, which is the part we're most interested. We use the, the subset of DOM nodes, a, a subset of nodes from a document. And we were very conservative when using the subset. We didn't discard as many nodes as we could. And we still managed to discard about half of the nodes in the page. And when we look at the time impact that this has, it cuts our, our evaluation of nodes about by half, which is, looks good. It's proportional to, to the amount of nodes we discarded. So if, if we were more aggressive, we could get better running times. Since we wrote our own CSS parser, we were able to optimize it as well. Not all rules. Uh, affected our features. So we were able to focus only on those that actually had any impact. And those were about 30% of the rules we found. And when we look at the time impact, we could also reduce it proportionally. We could then combine this both, uh, these two optimizations and our total execution time dropped to about half what we had. It's the, the left graph. Uh, it only dropped about half because we had some, uh, some tasks that couldn't be improved here, such as I.O. and uh, the HTML parsing, which happens in both, both methods, and that data structure initialization, etc. And on the right, we can see our method compared to an equivalent method that instead of our HTML parser and our CSS parser uses a rendering engine such as WebKit. And this is a very optimistic approach because we're using WebKit without images, without JavaScript, and without plugins. Sometimes uh, these are important. But uh, in a best case scenario, you have all of these turned off. And we can see we can run in about 16% of that time, which is very good when you have a a uh, large number of documents. So to conclude, we have stable results in a variety of pages. We have a good extraction quality. Some methods have better numbers than ours, but uh, they don't have the same performance that we do. And it's a trade-off, and we feel we have uh, good results given given the constraints. And we were able to use visual features with a much faster running time than when using a full rendering approach, such as uh, using WebKit. And we plan on extending this work in the future to other tasks on the web. And that's about it. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions. Are there questions for Eduardo?
So I'm curious, you talk about performance, and so both in my PhD research and then in my first job afterwards, we did uh, content analysis and PDF documents, a slightly different class. Um, it seems face, to be. I will. I will speak louder. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So in my past research and in my actual work, I've done sort of content analysis and content recognition. We've had much, much higher percentages of accuracy on much more complicated document forms, including newspapers and magazines, um, with trained models that analyze sort of indexing and positioning and things. So you, you, your reasoning behind this was performance. The, you said that you can basically discard a lot of this information and just look at certain characteristics and try to determine that they, to use that information to build properties about the document. One thing I would ask is, when you don't have something like HTML and CSS, where it's reasonably trivial to calculate font properties, if you look at, say, a PostScript model or something in a different font document category, where you have to basically render the document to get a lot of the anal analysis out of it, where do you get benefit from this algorithm, and how does this scale to other problems, is, is what I'm trying to get at, you given, mean, the, uh, given the reduction in accuracy? How we could apply this method to other documents, such as PDF? I'm, I'm trying. Well, I'm trying to understand how this scales in terms of performance as it moves to file formats that aren't as amenable to the sort of analysis you're doing, and the, you, you lose quite a bit of accuracy on a lot of the algorithms I've written in the past um, on analyzing documents. And I'm trying to understand why you why you make that trade-off. Why you feel the performance is such a key characteristic? Okay, uh, it's it's actually uh, I think a two-part answer. Uh, the first one, we had some technical limitations on the, on the project. So we were using um, decision trees as our machine learning method. And we did some quick experimentation later. And changing the method to something like an SVM and maybe tweaking some parameters, we were able to achieve better results. This would be, th there's room for improvement here. Just changing the method. But uh, I, I'm not really sure, uh, you, you mean scaling it to other documents? I, I, I didn't really get the, this part. Perhaps. Yes, that's, pr that's a better term. Uh, the, this, this HTML is, and CSS is very amenable to this type of analysis. A PostScript-based document, for example, probably wouldn't be or would be harder to produce. And so the, 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 the traditional sort of uh, glyph analysis and, and, and measurements and, and the styling characteristics of those um, and, and sort of black, uh, blackboard techniques of bringing sort of multiple sources of data to produce sort of very high levels of, uh, of content recognition. Um, but they are a lot slower. I'm trying to understand why the performance was such a, an, uh, why, why you felt there was a need for that and, and just generally understanding what you were trying to achieve overall. Yeah. Uh, so we need the performance because we're dealing with a lot of documents and we need to, to process them quick. And I, I think that the performance is very particular to, to the scenario of HTML and CSS. Since we're able to discard most of the document, we're able to look at smaller portions of it and only the bits that interested us. So that's where the performance comes from. The approach probably works. If, if we calculate the same features for, for instance, on a PostScript PDF file, it probably works. We haven't exp uh, experimented with it, but uh, the performance wouldn't be the same. We would have to to do some research on that specific to, to the type of document. Uh, does that answer your question? Thank you, yes. yes. We, we can talk later. Yeah. Um, other questions? Okay, well, let's thank Eduardo for his presentation. Thank you.